Hi guys, I hope you're all enjoying the lovely weather. So I've had a lot of families asking me recently about travel tips for their little ones, whether it's teeny tiny Bubba or a toddler or both. And I've been giving them some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So I just thought I'd share them with you guys and feel free to share these with, with friends. Um, for those you who don't know, I spent many years working as a maternity nurse, a nanny and a CPO and I'd be country hopping every couple of days. So I'd be in Paris one week, Barbados the next, Dubai the next. So here, there and everywhere with uh, different families that I worked with. So I learned a, a couple of things along the way. So my first thing is if you're booking flights and you're going local enough so say if you're in Ireland and you're going somewhere in Europe and it's only a couple of hours flight I would say if you have the option to book a morning flight try book a morning flight because when you arrive you've got the rest of the day to get back on track if you're only going to like Spain or France so it's not that far afield and you're only going for a week I would say don't move the schedule keep your baby on their usual routine it means that you don't have to adjust things when you go back by all means loosen things up a bit once you have a strong sleeper you have a flexible sleeper but if you're just establishing good sleep habits you might you know just want to keep things as tight as possible whilst enjoying your holidays if you're going long haul, so say if you're going to Australia or Dubai and you have the choice of flight times, I know there's not as many flights as there was previously, but if you have the choice of flight times, I would always choose a night flight for a long haul flight. It's very difficult to entertain a child, whether it's a six month old or a 16 month old on a very long haul flight. And it doesn't matter if you're flying private, first class, economy it's a long flight trust me <laughs> so i would suggest that you book a, a night flight it would just make your life that little bit easier no they're not going to sleep for the entire eight hours but you should get a good chunk of sleep on the flight if you've got a strong sleeper now if you're traveling here in ireland and your your drive is only two hours maybe go if you're if your morning nap is still quite long chunky then go for your morning nap and you've got the rest of the day to settle in if you have a toddler who's already dropped the morning nap you might decide to go for their big nap now it's not advised to nap every day in the car seat it's not safe but for essential uh, purposes like you have to get to your holiday destination so if you can plan your big nap around your um, drive it'll just make life easier for everyone if you go on a long drive during a wake window that's going to be tough going there's only so much the wheels on the bus you can sing and then everyone's going to get annoyed so if you can plan your your drive um, around your your nap it will make your life that a little bit easier if your drive is like four hours for example what you could do is head off in the morning and take like a pit stop halfway there find somewhere or bring a picnic blanket with you if you've got lovely weather and um let everyone out the car stretch the legs have feeds whatever needs to be done change nappies a little bit of fresh air kick the legs around and then back into the car and have the second stretch of your drive when I was working in London and I worked with a family who had a, a place in Scotland and we not that often but when we did it the drive we actually used to put the children to bed in the car so we do bat bottle bed but rather than bed it was car and we would take the trip and um, we take turns driving just because it was a long drive so we had dogs with us so it just meant that the children the dogs the whole crew could go at the same time so now when you're traveling when you arrive it's nice to introduce the children to the area they're going to be sleeping in so maybe if you were to arrive they could you know play with their toys on the floor in the room that they're going to be sleeping while you unpack things so they get familiar with room not necessary but if you have the option then you know half an hour of playing in that environment is definitely going to help things if your child sleeps in a dark room at night 
then sleeping in a dark room the new location is going to definitely help so you can bring your portable blackout blinds you can put towels up in the window whatever you need to do um if you there's no need to bring your sheets from the night before if you want to bring your sleep bag you can but all of my sleepy stars have snuggy teddies and it's one of the reasons why i recommend snuggy teddies it helps with the transition into daycare going starting with a childminder and also going on holidays so it's a familiar source of comfort that can come with them on holiday so when i travel with children like sometimes you know we've just arrived and like i remember arriving in barbados at four o'clock in the morning and i had a teeny tiny and there was a toddler the toddler's nanny hadn't arrived yet so i was kind of helping out with everyone and i was running the bath in the villa and the mom comes in and said you know it's four o'clock in the morning local time i said yep i don't know uh huh. <laughs> you're running the bath it's four o'clock in the morning i don't know what else to do i don't know who slept on the flight i don't know who fed on the flight i have no idea what's going on so we're just going to have a bath she's like okay don't argue with the tired irish lady <laughs> we put the bubbles into the bath i handed bubba to mommy he said okay lovely big breastfeed please thank you and i looked after the toddler and the two of them fell asleep and i woke them up at 8 a.m the next day local time and we were on local time so um, if you are going long haul and you are going for like if you're going to Australia you're not really going for a week most most families are going for like two to three weeks on a long haul journey with, with young children when you are going long haul and you want to get on local time what I would say is when you arrive at your destination not the airport but like the the villa or the hotel or Aunt Mary's house wherever it is when you arrive there look at the clock and for example, oh, it's 3 p.m. here, local time. Doesn't matter what time it is in Ireland. What would you normally do at 3 p.m. on Irish time? If you take that approach, you'll be on local time in a couple of days. When you return long haul, it's often more difficult to get back on Irish time. But if you take the same approach, you'll be back on uh, Irish time in about three to five days. So like no books will tell you how to get babies from London time to Australian time to Barbados time back to London time in the space of four weeks. You kind of, um, it's trial and error and that's how, how I, I learned the things that I do. So having your consistent sleep cues and associations, if you have your storybooks at your normal nighttime routine, don't bring the whole bookshelf, bring your four faves with you, bring your snuggy teddy and try and mimic your bedtime routine. Your child doesn't know what time it is. So say if you didn't arrive at your destination till 10 o'clock at night, you can still do the bath at 10 o'clock at night. If you arrive and you're like, oh gosh, they slept way too much in the car. They're not gonna be tired now. That's fine, let them rock and roll. You know, let's play with our toys. Let's talk to our auntie and our granny and whoever it is we met on the other side and um, have a lovely wake window and then do your bedtime routine at half 10. They don't know what time it is, okay? And that's the joy of having a good routine. You can move it and you can um, manipulate sleep when you need to uh, make adjustments. Okay, I hope you found that useful and enjoy your day. Sweet dreams.